In this video, I'll show you how to configure NeoVim for GDScript in Windows. By the end, you'll have tree sitter highlighting, LSP integration with warnings and errors when you mess up, go to definition and go to references movements, and the ability to debug your game from NeoVim. Now this video isn't about why you should use NeoVim for developing your game. If you need a why, my suggestion is to install NeoVim and try Tutor. You can also just go to a Linux box that has Vim installed and try Vim Tutor. Read and do the entire lesson from start to finish. Vim Tutor is what convinced me to switch immediately and I never went back. I joined the cult of Vim that day and it changed my life. If after doing it you decide that it's not for you, then that's okay. People make great games using all sorts of editors. So I'm going to start with a fresh install of NeoVim using Winget. I don't actually use Windows for development, but I'm focusing this video on Windows because I know most indie game developers use Windows. If you don't have Winget installed, you can install that from the Microsoft Store. It's called App Installer. I'll put a link in the description below. Next, we need a NeoVim config. If you already have a config that you're working with, you can skip this part. But if not, my recommendation is the Kickstart NVim config. It is a great starting point for anyone in their NeoVim journey, and it has a ton of comments that will help you customize it to your preferences. But before we clone it, we need to install its dependencies. The easiest way on Windows is to install the Chocolatey Package Manager and then use that to install the dependencies. Use Winget again to install Chocolatey. Then open another instance of PowerShell as an administrator and install the dependencies. Ripgrep, Make, and Mingw are for fuzzy finding files from within NeoVim. Findshell, Unzip, Gzip, and Wget are for installing LSPs and debug adapters. If you're just doing GD script development and don't plan on using other languages, you can skip the last four. Next, we need to clone the kickstart nvim repo as the NeoVim config directory. In Windows, the NeoVim config directory is home app data local nvim, so git clone with that argument at the end to name the directory nvim. If git isn't installed, you can install that via winget install git. Then close your instance of PowerShell and reopen it so that it has everything you installed in its path. Change directory to the NeoVim config directory and open NeoVim with the first argument as the current directory. You should see the lazy package manager install all the plugins that come with the kickstart nvim config. Wait for it to finish. If you installed all the dependencies properly with Chocolady, there shouldn't be any errors. Press Q to close the lazy installer window. At this point, if you've never used Vim before, now is the time to go through the tutor to learn how to move around the file. Press escape to make sure you're in normal mode, and then type colon tutor, and then press enter. Go through the entire lesson to learn how to move around. Next, it's time to customize this config so we can use it with GDScript. Select the init.lua file in the listing and open it. It's useful to have another instance of PowerShell open at a Godot project so you can test the changes to your NeoVim config as you go along. For this video, I'll be using the canonical Dodge the Creeps project that you can find in the official Godot documentation. So if you actually open a GD script file right now, you'll see this tree sitter parser for GD script has been installed. That's because in your kickstart nvim config, in the init.lua, tree sitter is configured to auto install based on the file type. So NeoVim saw that you opened the .gd file and it automatically installed the GD script parser for you. Personally, I don't like this and I set this value to false and then just add the GD script in Godot resource to this ensure installed table in my config. Or you can leave this setting as is and just continue. But what does tree sitter do you might be wondering? Aside from text highlighting, a properly configured tree sitter gives you access to more sophisticated text objects on top of the regular ones provided natively by NeoVim. For example, you can do something like CIF to change the inside of a function, DAF to delete the entire function, or even something like change the order of the parameters to a call to a function with space A. But configuring tree sitter is out of scope for this video. If you're interested in that, you can check out my own personal NeoVim config that I'll link in the description below. Next, we need to configure the GD script LSP so that when you make a mistake in your code, you get a warning in NeoVim the same way that you would get one in the built-in Godot editor. Before that though, you should go to Editor, 
Editor Settings, Text Editor, Behavior, and make sure that the Auto Reload Scripts on External Change is checked. This stops Godot from asking you to confirm a reload every time you change a file in NeoGun. Then go back to your init.lua file and add these lines to the very end of the config block for NeoVim and Vim LSP config. These first four lines create a GD script config Lua table that we will use to set up the GD script LSP. These next three lines are Windows specific things. On Windows, you have to use NCAT rather than NC to communicate with the GD script LSP. So this if statement checks if we're on Windows, and then if we are, it changes the command to use NCAT. In order to use NCAT, you need to have NMAP installed. So if you don't have that installed, open another PowerShell window and run winget install nmap. And then this very last line actually sets up the GD script LSP. If you're watching this video and the init.lua that you cloned from kickstart and vim looks completely different from what I'm showing, it's because the maintainers of that repo frequently change and move things around. To get to the state that I have in the video, you can check out this specific hash using git. I'll put that in the description below. Save your NeoVim config, and then switch over to the PowerShell instance that's open in your Godot project. If you quit and reopen this one, you should start seeing errors in NeoVim coming from Godot. Now, it's important to have Godot running in order for this to work, because basically what's happening is NeoVim and Godot are communicating and exchanging information about your code. So when you fix your code, the errors should disappear. Aside from displaying errors, connecting the LSP gives you access to some more cool movements. For example, you can do GD to go to the definition of a variable, GR to see all the places that variable is used, and then you can even do Shift K to see the documentation of a function. Next, we'll configure the debug adapter. This will allow you to run a debug session of your Godot game from NeoVim. First, open the debug.lua file in Lua Kickstart Plugins debug.lua. And then, so that we don't have to install it, comment everything that has to do with Golang. It's these three lines. And then add these lines to the bottom of your debug.lua file. This first section configures the debug adapter protocol plugin to use these settings to communicate with Godot. These settings correspond with the default settings in the Editor Settings Network Debug Adapter. This next section configures the GD script part of the Debug Adapter plugin. Another thing that I like to do is to change the key maps to match what's in Godot. So F5 for Start, F12 for Continue, although in the Debug Adapter plugin for NeoVim that's both Continue, F11 for Step Into, F10 for Step Over, and then F8 for Terminate. Save your debug.lua file and go back to your init.lua and then search for debug. Uncomment this line so that the init.lua file pulls in the debug lua file that you just edited. Save and restart your NeoVim. You should see Lazy Package Manager install all the plugins that are related to the debug adapter protocol. After this, go back to the PowerShell instance that's open in your Godot project and restart NeoVim. You can set a debug breakpoint using space B, and then if you press F5, the debug session should start. Press F10 to continue, and then F8 to terminate. Finally, we can configure NeoVim to be the external editor of Godot. This means that when I click on a script here, rather than opening in the built-in Godot editor, it'll open in NeoVim. Personally, I don't use this that much because the whole point of using Vim is to avoid using the mouse as much as possible. If I wanted to open the player script, I would use Telescope by pressing space SF and then searching for the player. But it's easy enough to configure, so we might as well do it. Go back to Godot, go to Editor, Editor Settings, and then search for External. It should be under Text Editor External, and then click on the Use External Editor checkbox set the exact path to be NeoVim, and then the exact flags, which will be the arguments for NeoVim, set it to server, localhost 6004, remote send this string, 
which basically tells NeoVim what file to open and what line and column number to open at. So close that and then go back to your init.lua file and add these lines. This first line checks that there's a project.godot file that's readable in the current working directory. And then if there is, then start listening on address. What address is depends on whether we're on Windows. If we're on Windows, then we use the local host that we configured in Godot. On Linux, you can use a file. Save your init.lua and go back to the PowerShell instance that's open in the Godot project and restart it. So now when you check your server list, you should see that it's listening on localhost 6004. And when you click on a file here in Godot, it should open in NeoVim. So that's it. You should now have a NeoVim working pretty well for writing games in GDScript. I'll link to the fork of Kickstart NVim with all the changes I made in the video so you can copy paste easier from there. I'll also link to the actual NeoVim config I use every day in my day job and nighttime hobbyist game development. If you have any questions or run into any problems, you can ask me in the comment below. Good night and good luck.